How many is glad you're here today? Amen. Well, you know what? We're going to declare this today together, corporately. What does that mean? At the same time? So, one, two, three. This, this is, is the day, day that the Lord has made. And we will rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Woo! Hallelujah. Let's just begin to raise our hands. Bless the Lord. Oh, we thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. You are wonderful and greatly to be praised. Hallelujah. I 
headspace thinking when you were singing yeah you know I messed it up listen I own what I do okay I, I'm me and I own what I do some of you'd be good to do the same but I was thinking what 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 I got off track Shelby and I want you to do that again because it wasn't Shelby's fault at all but I got to thinking, ain't no sinner that he can't save. And I got to, and it just kept replaying in my mind, kept replaying in my mind over. And I got to thinking, there's so much self-righteousness in the world today. There's so much of I've done too much, I can't start over. I'm too old to start now syndrome. I can't do this. And then you've got Pharisees and Sadducees. You've got them blocking the entrance saying you've got to look a certain way, you've got to act a certain way, you've got to dress a certain way before you, you've done too much. There's no way, oh my God, do you know they got a tattoo? They can't even come here. Oh my Lord, they've been married three times. They can't even come here. Oh my goodness, they've got kids and they ain't even married, but they can't come here. There's all of this segregation going on and it's not even about color. We're segregating sin. We're categorizing sin. And do you know overeating is a sin? Just as much as it is if it's something else. But everybody puts, oh my God, they're in sin. They're run, you know, they're running around. They're a fornicating. <laughs> and overeating is listed above that. You see where we've got to? We've got to a place that we can't even say, listen, there ain't no sinner that he can't save. But then, listen to me, 
after you've made Jesus the Lord of your life, then you're no old sinner anymore. You was an old sinner. You got saved by grace, and now you've been made the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. So then you walk on. You walk on. If not, you get you you're bringing the old baggage with you. There comes a time you're not that old sinner no more. You've been saved by grace, but there you've got you've got to come to the knowledge and the saving grace of Jesus. You've got to come to where there's a place for everybody. There's a place. You know, we used to sing an old song in the Baptist church. There's room at the cross for you. There's still room at the cross. And don't, and, and don't get me wrong. You're not going to come any other way but by that cross. But once you come to that cross and you have acknowledged the, what Jesus paid for your and my, my sin then you go on from the cross and head straight to that upper room. And after that, then my friend, you got some walking power and some staying power. But until you make that step and that, that consecration, and get that foundation under your feet. But know that you've not done too much. You've not said too much. And like we say in the South, you ain't, you ain't been too ugly. And I ain't talking about looks. That you can't be forgiven. That's a lie from hell to say that you've been that you've done too much that you've been can't be forgiven and the song says are you tired are you tired of shame the enemy beating you up listen today mess up and all let me tell you about my Jesus. He'll make a way where there ain't no way, where there seems to be no way. He's already risen up from that empty grave. And they sure enough ain't no sinner that he can't save. So if you're here today or you're online, let us tell you about Jesus today. In a world where everybody, nobody knows what's going on. People are so frustrated, they can't even think. They turn on the news, they don't know. Are we going into World War III? What's going to happen? However goes Israel, goes the rest of the world. So right now, the best thing you can do is let us tell you about Jesus. Because just like that, he can come anytime. Are you past the point of weary? Is your burden weighing heavy? Is it all too much to carry? Let me tell you about my Jesus. Do you feel that empty feeling? Cause shame's done all it's stealing. And you dance before some healing. Let me tell you about my Jesus. Oh. He makes a way where there ain't no way He rises up from an empty grave There ain't no sinner that he can't say Let me tell you about my Jesus His love is strong and his grace is free And the good news is I know that he Can do for you what he's done for me Let me tell you about my Jesus
broken dreams and wasted years until the past had disappeared. Let me tell you about my Jesus. lift our hands and bless our God. There's some things that I heard early this morning. Come on, let's just worship a few minutes. Hallelujah. How we bless the Lord. Lord, we thank you. How we bless you, Lord. Come on in just a little bit.
Lord, we thank you for this day. We give you honor and praise and glory for your goodness, your mercy, and your kindness. For you, God, are good. And there is no other God but you. You are the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And you are the God that is manifesting yourself in Israel right now. You are the very God that the wind is fighting for, the rain is fighting for. You are the very one who gave us our life and our breath. There is no other God. Come on and begin to tell him that, would you, all over the world. There is no other God. There's only you. You are God. You are God. There is no other God. Come on and tell him. Come on, I dare you to tell him out loud. Let all of hell hear that you believe there's only one God. Come on. Come on. the Lord say to rise up come up like an eagle and look down upon what's happening and see what's going on around you see what God is doing for God is doing things that we've never seen before hallelujah Come on, just a little bit. We will hear it and we will say it. Stay with it. Stay with it. For I saw early this morning, I saw a battlefield and I saw an eagle and it flew high. And I was reminded of a vision that I saw years ago. And the Lord is wanting us to come up high enough now to rise up high enough to see what's going on down here. To see where he is in this. To see where the enemy's moving. To see the plans. Not only the enemy's plans, but God's plans. And to speak strategically into this time. It is time to forget all selfishness. Compassion gets lost in selfishness. For you can never see from above to below if you only think of you and where you will go. insecurity and selfishness all stems from fear and it keeps you from soaring high and keeps you grounded here you can never show compassion as long as selfishness reigns it is time for you to rise above your emotional pain for the world has painted a picture that God's people get caught in the mirror every time they pass. And they stare at their own eyes in the mirror. And all they do is they're consumed with their past. They see the self-destruction and the self-selfishness 
that consumes them every day and even in the night. You will never, doing this, be able to win this fight. For selfishness displaces compassion and you can't show it to another living soul because you're constantly thinking, what about me? What about me? I'm hurting so. But you've never even experienced what some of the forefathers gone before you did. You never experienced what the apostles of the Lamb did. You've never experienced what some of the prophets of old did. Selfishness is a stench in the nostrils of God. It stinks. It smells. It brings a bad odor to the balm of Gilead. A prophetic word, yes, a prophetic word curbed this morning because this is the thing that must be dealt with to hear what's next. The world has conditioned us to me time. I have to have me time. What about me? What about me? It's the big me. It's the big thing in most lives is themselves. And surely it's not God's will if it don't please me. These things must be dealt with in our own lives. If not, it just becomes criticism of everything around us because it don't line up with you. The Lord spoke to me this morning backstage and he said, selfishness keeps you from operating in compassion. Compassion is putting the needs, and recognizing the needs of others before your own. You know, according to church history, the Apostle Peter was crucified upside down after he had watched his wife and children done that way. And yet he still stood. We're in a time like no other time. And there are believers around the world that are going through from the time they open their eyes in the morning, going through more than you do in half your life. You say, well, Brother Robin, you're trying to uh, guilt us and make us feel like children. No, we need to quit acting like children. And we need to start praying for others around us. When you go through Hebrews chapter 12, 11 and 12, and you see the wall of faith, you see things that they did and they went through that we've never even seen. We have to get ourselves off of our minds and start thinking of others. The Bible said in that wall of faith, it said some were sawn asunder, some were thrown to lions, some did this and some did that, not accepting deliverance. So, but God has prepared some better thing for you. What could be a better thing he's talking about? is praying people out of things, praying people through to the other side. Did you know when Herod took James prisoner, he cut his head off. But he took Peter prisoner because he saw 
that it pleased the Jews, the leaders of the Jews at that time. Not the Jewish people, the leaders. And it said the apostle Peter, but the church prayed for him all night long. There's no mention they prayed for James. They prayed for Peter. And an angel went and turned him loose. And when he stood up, the chains fell off, the gate opened of its own accord. There he went through all of those Roman soldiers and they never saw him when he passed. Then when he got out on the street, he realized he had been delivered miraculously. He goes to where they're having the all-night prayer meeting, where they're praying for him. He knocks on the door. Rhoda comes to the door, looks at him, runs back and says, Peter's at the door. They said, oh, no, it's his angel. No, it was his angel that turned him loose. So I really believe that the better thing and the better time you and I are standing in is to pray the deliverance for those believers that are in, in, in life and death situations all over the world. And God is depending on you and me to pray if it takes all night to pray them out. But you can't do that with you on your mind. But what about me? What about me? What about me? That's a big problem right there. What about them? What about what's happening in Israel? What's, what about what's happening around the world? What about what's happening to little children all over the world? While we, the church drinks four Starbucks a day and never pray. Oh, Brother Robin, you're just jumping on us this morning. No, I'm not. I'm trying to wake us up. I'm just trying to wake us up to get off of ourself and get on to something else. I get selfishness is a wearisome thing. So if we begin to hear this, I really believe the Lord is trying to get us up above something so that we can see something then all of this other stuff will just work God is not going to have you intercede for another one's life and leave you incomplete he's just not going to do that he's trying to get you to sow the highest seed that's ever been sown love for someone else hallelujah and if we can manifest his love. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whoever believes in him would not perish but have everlasting life. Jesus never once thought of himself through his whole life. And yet walked in enough power to walk across water. Maybe that's why he could do it. Hallelujah. <laughs> Maybe that's what's keeping us from manifesting the works he did and the greater works than he did. Is our lack of love for one another. Hallelujah. So let's just lift our hands and thank God and get ourselves off our mind. And whoever the Lord places in your thoughts this morning, why don't you go ahead and pray for them right there where you are? Come on, and why don't we just do that and, and let the Lord use us and all this spiritual power that's bottled up inside of you right now and let him use you for that and the deliverance of someone else. Hallelujah. Come on, come on, come on. Hallelujah.
thank you for this day. I thank you, Lord God, for bringing home the children of those in this room that are strayed and lost. Yes, I will, Lord. I will tell them. For the Lord wants your children to come home to you because every distraction the enemy can make right now, he's going to. And it's all to curb the mighty power that's on the inside of every one of you right now. It's just distraction. All selfishness is distraction. And it can seem so right, but yet it can hinder everything that God's trying to do in your life and my life. So what we have to do is begin to go ahead and just get him on our minds, get get love on our minds hallelujah yes every attack right now the devil don't care if he kills who he kills or who he don't but every attack right now is to distract you it's to distract you it's to keep you from your 
purpose and your destiny. Destiny awaits us today. Destiny is setting right ahead of us right now. And it's crying and calling for us to take the next step. There are destinies in this room right now that absolutely could turn the world upside down. You don't know sitting among you and surely on the other side of those cameras could be young presidents, 10 years old. There could be doctors that have cures for everything, watching all kinds of things. There's a destiny awaiting. It's not just for the billion soul harvest, it's to disciple them when they come. Imagine that. Imagine a billion souls getting saved. How many churches would need to be built? Imagine how many, how many healing rooms would need to be set up. Imagine how many Bible schools could be teaching and, and discipling. A billion souls? We speak of it. Could, we could be right now and just here could be people that God is planning on using for that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And it goes beyond the Baptist. And it goes beyond the Methodists and Presbyterians. Church of God. Assemblies of God. It goes beyond them. It goes beyond what we fossilized and thought it should be. For God has a destiny to take each one as far as they should have went. Imagine if there was really a full gospel of every revelation of every denomination put together. Imagine if there was such a thing. Imagine what we would be doing right now. There would be believers who could pick up the phone and call world leaders if there was that kind of power in the church and say, you know, we're going to need you to stop this war right here. And they just stop. And they'd be calling believers. What, what, should, what, what is God saying? So a destiny is big. It's huge. Your destiny has a key place in the mind of God and his plans hallelujah is this making sense to anybody because i'm just standing here talking right now you need to say i receive my destiny if you don't then don't say it but if you do wouldn't it be a shame go your whole life and never know what god planned for you wouldn't that be aw awful? And look back and wonder one day, especially when you get to heaven and you say, Lord, why didn't I get to do this, this, and this? And the Lord shows you and said, let me show you what I, I wanted you to do. All it took was a yes. Yes. People want to be missionaries. They want to be, the, oh, Lord, send me to Brazil for you. There's a great revival breaking out in Brazil right now. Started today. You'll hear about it. Just watch. And people say, well, Lord, send me to Africa for you. But then the Lord says, go across the street and talk to that person. Oh, I can't do that. I can't do that. But you're going to go to Africa. <laughs> oh, I'm talking to me as well as you as anybody. We're in the body of Christ, man. This is just, we're just talking among family of what we need to be doing now. We need to right now begin to go into the place of destiny. The place of great love, the place to where we put in action everything that we've been taught. Come on, let's lift our hands and bless our God. Come on, come on, come on, sing in the spirit, right?
to take everybody up let them look down and see and then when you see then you walk toward your destiny oh come on y'all that's that's exactly what you have to do we have to get up to where we can see where we need to be where the enemy is where God is what's going on and then we look at it and say now that we can see from up in this place we're looking now we start walking toward our destiny your destiny's bright. Amen. I really believe that God plans some things better for us. Yeah. It is to walk in such power Amen. that there's nothing impossible. Yeah. Hallelujah. All right. Okay. Amen. Well, we was waiting on... Uh, my son here. I don't know where he's at. He's here he is. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, come and and talk about what they're fixing to experience. Well, hallelujah. <laughs> good. Well, I would say it's good morning, but it's eleven forty-four. So, you know. <laughs> but uh. Hey everybody, uh, my name is John, if you don't know, and this is my, this is my wife Madison. We're the, we're the children's church pastors here at, uh, at Adventure Camp uh, in Church International. And uh, I just wanted to, kind of wanted to, to share something with you today. Um, you know, number one, we need to fix that. Uh, number two, uh, <laughs> we're the children's church pastors. Uh, 
what was really my number two. Number two, uh, I'm also the media director here at Church International, and we're, I'm, I'm very, very blessed that those two things kind of go hand in hand, um, because today, you know, one of the, the biggest ways that you can reach, you know, kids today is through media. You know, I mean, it just, no matter how you look at it, that's what they're into today, you know, and the Lord showed us years ago, you know, you got to go where they're at, right? I didn't want to get on TikTok. I didn't want, I didn't want Landon to have a TikTok. <laughs> I didn't want to do that because I downloaded TikTok. First thing I saw was some kid cussing on TikTok, and I was like, I don't want any part of this, but you got to go where they're at. Yeah. You know, that's just, that's just how it is. So um, before, before I say anything else, before I go on, um, let's see, can we get, uh, can we get these, these congas moved out of the way just, just a little bit? Um, we have a um, we have an announcement from Officer Billy Bob Joe uh, last week. For those of who was here last week, who was here last week? Okay, okay, cool. So, um, kind of a bombshell announcement last week, right before we right before we left, was uh, that Adventure Camp has got a lot of new projects going on. So I said we got to get something out like yesterday. <laughs> you know, now that we've. We shared it with everybody, so we wanted to show you guys what that would look like. So, um, without further shampoo, is your first look at uh, a new series from Adventure Camp. Check this out. Hello, everyone. I'm Officer Billy Bob Joe. We here at Adventure Camp have noticed a significant lack of faith and values-based content in the family entertainment space. Who are you, you know, to? <clears throat> you know, mainstream family entertainment just doesn't share the same messages and morals like they used to. Were we recording today? Which is why we want to fill that void with fun, family-friendly entertainment that will encourage people to do the things that God wants us to do. <gasps> oh! Are you talking about the show? I was getting to that, Landon. Yes, it's true. The CI Puppet friends have banded together to put on a brand new show. Kids and adults alike will enjoy all the fun and wacky things that go on. Yeah, it's called the CI Puppet friends. Landon, I'm not there yet. Parents will like knowing that their kids have something good to watch. Yeah, like there's this one sketch where I wear a bow tie and then I tell Kids and kids at heart will enjoy the clever humor that our puppets bring to the table. Yeah, like the one where Silly and Millie are talking Bible about- Bible scholars will appreciate the nods and deep cut references to the stories that define the way of life. Oh, kind of like the Adam naming the animal That's sketch. That's exactly why the world needs a show like the CI Puppet Friends because- Yeah, because there's this really cool Would scene where we- Would you please let me finish? Oh. Sorry. I also hired a camera crew to document the entire making of the show! Wait, you did what? Yeah, they're gonna film our every move for the entire show! And when exactly did they start? This morning. Wait a minute. Yeah, we actually got a really cool screen test. Check this out! Wait! I can't explain the way I feel about you now. I'm blown away. By the comfort of your love, you're unbelievable. Oh, man. Isn't this show gonna be awesome? Terrific. Well, anyways. We hope you look forward to all the fun and exciting things headed your way when CI Puppet Friends launches. Wait, 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 wait. What? The... Aren't you gonna tell them about the cartoon? Don't! Oh, Landon, I wanted to surprise them when it releases. The... Well, then what am I gonna do with all those promotional images I printed? I was gonna show them on the camera. Landon! All right, yes, we have a cartoon that will accompany the show. Yeah, I even put a clip together the first couple minutes. Wanna see it? Landon White! Officer Billy Bob Joe, come in. Officer Billy Bob Joe. This is Officer Billy Bob Joe, go ahead. Code Red, situation at Mars Mattress Museum on 3rd. Roger that, over and out. Ha, 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 ha.
<laughs> Goodbye, spring mattresses. Hello, memory foam. Hold it right there. The Pajama Bandits. I should have known. You're under arrest. Leave us be. Mattresses are expensive, you know? Well, that don't warrant stealing. You're coming with me. You'll have to catch a spice copy. Negative. I got it from here. Over. Give it up already. Huh. I seriously thought I grabbed the memory foam. Split up! <laughs> Pillow fight! <laughs> Dolph feathers. Isn't this exciting? I'm telling you. Well... At least I didn't have to put a release window on oh, this. Oh, for real. I know how much work it would have been for you, so I went ahead and made one. <sighs> I need an aspirin. Everyone's first look at Adventure Camp's first series that uh, you, well, should I just go ahead and say? Well, you'll be able to watch it for free on GIAG TV. puts out there will be an adventure camp tab so you can make a login for your kids to watch and you can rest assured knowing that you know they're not watching anything crazy like what's on you know kids YouTube and things like that and then everything from it like the 11th hour to new special shows and things like that Sunday streams all of that will be on JAG TV that's right Madison <laughs> And uh, there will be more details about GIAG TV and when it'll be out and how you can get it uh, very, very soon. Just keep a lookout for that. Well, I'm gonna, at this time, I'm gonna hand the, the mic over to Krista. And um, see the Adventure Campers in Adventure Camp. Thank you. How awesome is that? Man. I don't really, I don't, I can't remember the last time I watched like a cartoon that I actually enjoyed. And uh, cause now they're not good anymore. Those, the, I mean, they're not, they're not good anymore. And uh, so they, they've kind of, every time I would go visit the studio or something, they, they would tell me, they would say, uh, you want to see what we've got done? So I've got to see it from the time it was black and white, just stenciled out until that and so I, I am just so excited and uh, we've, we've kind of been sitting on GIAG TV for quite some time now and that's been an announcement that we have been wanting to make and today is the day. Praise God. Amen. Well it is offering time here at Church International. Yeah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. If you need an envelope, please raise your hand. Somebody will see to it that you get one. If you're watching online, you can give by going to churchint.org. 
And um, we're going to, I, as um, we were singing that song earlier, Gino, could I ask you to come play keyboard just for a little bit? Call for a minstrel, please. We were singing that song, Let Me Tell You About My Jesus. What a song. And, you know, and I was back there, and I'm, I'm trying not to cry while I'm playing drums at the same time, and then I got to go to play them with one hand because I'm wiping a tear with the other. But it's because you, you think about what he says, let me tell you about my Jesus. And you think about all that Jesus has done for you. And you think about where, where you were and where you are now. And you think, my goodness. I, I mean, no, his goodness. His absolute goodness. How you were one way and now you're another. And the difference was him. And I, I begin to think about, and, and since it's the offering, I begin to think about the financial miracles that He has done in my life. You know, the Scripture says that the Lord loves a cheerful giver. Well, what is, what is another meaning for cheerful? Grateful. Being grateful, giving with an attitude of gratefulness. Instead of just giving and sowing your seed just because that's what you do. And just because it's, a, it's an order of service. I never want the offering at Church International just to become a routine thing. Yes, is it every service? Just about. You have witnessed services where the Lord said don't do an offering. But it should never be a routine thing. It should always be something that you're grateful for. It should always be something that, that you even have something to give. And there's, there's a scripture and I would have to, I'd have to go and I'd have to look it up. But I believe it's in Romans where it talks about how can they call out for help if they don't know who to call. How can they believe something if they don't know who to believe? How can they believe in God's Word if it's not preached to them? How can they believe in the miracles of God if the miracles of God are not preached to them? I'll, I'll never forget. I remember. I remember... Praying to God I had enough money to go through the drive through at Taco Bell. I remember saying no to people when they would ask me to go out to eat because I was embarrassed because I didn't have the money. And I was so stubborn and hard-headed I never would ask them for anything. Anything. Even when I was a teenager. Never would ask him for anything. Because I wanted to do it myself. You know, that's, that's back to that selfishness that I was talking about earlier. Not that, not that I, I should have went and, and asked them for help or anything, but it was selfishness because I thought that I could pull myself out of my own mess. And you're thinking too highly of yourself if you think that you can pull yourself out of your own mess. And I, I remember, you know, a lot of you have heard me talk about when all I gave was 65 cents because it's all I had. But the Lord told me, give it. Give everything you got. 65 cents did not come as a shock to him that that was in my wallet. That was it. That's all I had. So I gave it. 
And then you've heard how, a lot of you have heard how the Lord pulled me out of that situation. And how right before Christmas time, I was blessed with $650. That was a lot to me. Now, in 2023, it won't get you $650 ain't $650 and like it used to do. Now, in the summertime in Alabama, that's a power bill. <laughs> and then it's gone. That's groceries. That's a Costco run. But it was a lot to me. Going from 65 cents to $650. I wanted to scream, I'm a millionaire, and run down the street. <laughs> you been there? Yes. But there was something that my stubborn and hard-headed self would not let go of. And that was this. And I thought to myself, this right here, see, it didn't even hurt. Said, just dare to take him at his word. I remember every time I'd have to go get my tag renewed, it was late anyways. It had been expired for a minute because I had to save up the money to go get my tag renewed. But then when I got there, I knew I was going to have to pay more because I got fined because I let my insurance lapse so many times because I didn't have the money to pay it. A lot of you don't know that Krista's been there. I've been there. I get it. I know what it's like. And for somebody to stand behind a podium and tell you that being poor and not having anything makes you humble and a better person, they is lying. Because it didn't make me a better person. It made me angry. It made me embarrassed. It made me ashamed. And it made me frustrated. Why? Because you're constantly trying to pull yourself out of your own mess. And it makes you desperate. Then that opens the door for the enemy to come in and do all kinds of things. Give you opportunity after opportunity after opportunity just to put gas in your car. And so, some of the teenagers and the young people in this room today, I want you to grasp hold of this now. Now, before you go out there on your own. Why? Because I'm here to tell you that the Word works. And you can believe God because His Word is true. The Scripture says, Thy Word is true. It's true. And when he says, I'll do these things for you, if you'll do this, it's not a bargain. He's not trying to bribe you. He's telling you the truth. He's saying, I will do this. Put my word into action. That's what you're doing. You're not just giving. It's not some kind of get rich quick scheme. What it is is you're putting the word of God into action in your life. When you quote Luke 6.38. When you quote Malachi 3.10. It's acting on the word. And that's what makes the difference in your life. So let me tell you about my Jesus. He's true to His Word. Why? Because He is the Word. He was the Word made flesh. Take everything in this book right here. Take every letter, every word, every scripture and mold it into a human being. And that is Jesus. And He means what He says. And so today... 
If you are in a mess, if you found yourself in one of those messes that you just can't seem to climb out of, say, well, I'm afraid to get rich because I'm afraid I'll be greedy. You're greedy now if that's the case. Money doesn't create character. It reveals it. If you're mean when you're poor and you're greedy when you're poor and you don't want to help nobody when you're poor, guess what? It's magnified when you're rich. But if you look for every opportunity to bless somebody, you look for every opportunity because you continuously say, I'm blessed to be a blessing even when you ain't got nothing. And you continue to say, Lord, who can I bless today? Then guess what? It's magnified when you got it. And you can't outgive God till you're just running down the street asking the Lord, show me who to bless, show me who to bless. You can't outgive Him. Why? Because He actually means what He says. Because thy word is true. Money doesn't, money doesn't make you mean. Money doesn't make you evil. If that's the case, you're evil now. That's why a lot of evil people use money for evil things. They were evil before. And it's not money that's the root of all evil. It's the love of it. And I'll tell you this, and then I'm going to close. Why? Because I want to tell you about my Jesus. We should never get tired of hearing what Jesus has done for somebody. Do you need to say something? I began thinking a couple years ago. It was in October a couple years ago. And I began thinking, there's a lot of people that have come out of poverty who, are, who were, well, I should say this. There's a lot of people who were in the occult and got saved and came out who were actually against the prosperity message. And I began wondering why. Why? It ain't, it ain't to judge them for that. You don't know what they saw. Because the scripture says the love of money is the root of all evil. And if you want to be evil, if you seek after the things of evil, and the dark world and the darkness and you're seeking after these things and you want more and you want more and you want more and you just can't seem to get enough eventually you're going to have to tap into the root to access all that is evil which means you begin to love money that's tapping into the root of all evil now you'll get that one day. To tap into the root of all that is evil, you got to love money. I'm not talking about enjoying having it. I'm talking about loving it. The way you love Jesus is the way you would love a $5 bill. That's the root of all evil. That you'll do anything for it. You'll kill somebody over $5. That's the root of all evil. That's loving money. So a lot of people that have come out of that world are just are against it because they saw what the root of all evil is and what it does. And there's no telling what they've seen. So I begin to ask, ask the Lord. I said, well, if there's a root of all evil, 
I said, well, what is, what is the root of all good? I said, what is the root of all good? I said, I won't know because I won't tap into it. And I had a dream one night. And I was headed to my parents' house in my dream. And you have to go up a hill. And there's a stop sign. You can see their house on the left. You see other houses on the right. And in my dream, I was stopped there in my car. And it was so real, I can see it as plain as I'm looking at you. Actually, probably a little bit more clear because these lights are bright. And I was sitting in my car, and I knew I could not see him, but I knew that Jesus himself was sitting in my passenger seat. And I could hear him when he talked, but I couldn't see him, but I knew he was right there. And I asked him in my dream, I said, if there's a root of evil, what is the root of all good? And my Jesus said this back to me. Because guess what? He responds when you talk to him. And I asked him that. And he responded back to me with these words. And I'll never forget it. He said, in the beginning was the word. And he began to quote that entire scripture. Imagine that, Jesus answering you with his word. And he said, in the beginning was the word. And I said, Lord, what does that mean? He said, I, the word, am the root of all that is good. <laughs> Where they tap in to the love of money, you need to tap into the love of Him, the love of His Word, because in the beginning was the Word, and that's the root of everything you see in existence. In the beginning was the Word. This is the root, and without it, you can't access the blessing. You can't access the absolute goodness of God if you do not tap into the root. And in it is the blessing. And the blessing of the Lord maketh rich. And guess what? Remember we talked about poverty being shameful? Being depression? All of this? All of these negative feelings? The blessing of the Lord maketh rich and it adds no sorrow to it. And it all comes by tapping into this. Why do you think we quote the word itself over the offering? Why? Because that's the root. It's where it comes from. And my brother and sister, today, you're already that far down underground. You've already dug yourself that far down. You might as well keep and tap into the root today. Go ahead and tap into it while you're down there. And you watch yourself start to come up. Come up and before you know it, you're on the other side looking at the pit that you were just delivered from. And you say, you mean I was in that? But Jesus is the root. So I came here to tell you about my Jesus. The one who is the root of all good. And he wants nothing but to see you prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. Well, how do we prosper our soul? With this right here. Hallelujah. So just dare to tap into the root today and just see just see literally what do you have to lose some of you's done lost it all anyways and I may not be talking to anybody in this room but on the other side of that camera some of you may have lost it all anyways 
just dare to take him at his word and what he says. Because I can assure you, I'm living proof standing here today. You may not know me, but I know me. And I know what I've been through. And I know what I've experienced. And I wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for tapping into this right here. And so today we want to quote the root of it all over our seed today. So stand up on your feet. If you have your gift today, if you have your seed, I want you to hold up whatever represents your finances. If you don't have anything that represents your finances because you ain't got no finances, raise your hands. Not raise your hand to tell me that you don't have anything. Raise your hands in faith that, Lord, I believe that I'll have something to give. You know what? He honors that. Just like the loaves and fish, he says, that'll do. And so today I want to quote the word of God, the words in red, because thy word is true. And it says, give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over shall men give unto your bosom. For with the same measure that you meet with all, it shall be measured to you again. You say, I believe it. Now, do you really? Do you really believe it? Then say it like you mean it, not routine. I believe it. Now I receive it and I call it done in Jesus' name. Now, for a tither. Hallelujah. If you're not a tither, my brother and sister, I encourage you, get in the root and study it out. And then I will encourage you to become one. Not for my sake, for yours. <laughs> because it covers. It's an insurance policy like no other. And it covers way more than just your money. I can promise you that. And I could stand up here for hours telling you story after story after story of how the tithe and me standing on the promise of a tither has saved my life. It saved my stuff. It saved multiple things. Why? Because I just dared to put the Word of God into action. One person criticized me one time saying, this is going down a dark path right now. Me talking about how the tithe saved my life one time. And they said, you mean giving money that ain't what I said I said the promise of the tither that he will rebuke the devourer for my sake and because I am a tither I had access to that scripture and I had a right and the devil knew it which means he had to let me go so, I encourage you, study it out for yourself. Don't just take my word for it, take his. And then, then come talk to me. Malachi 3.10, right here, says, Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in mine house. And prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive it, and I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes, and he shall not destroy the fruits of your ground, neither shall your vine cast her fruit before the time in the field, saith the Lord of hosts, and all nations shall call you blessed, for you shall be a delightsome land, saith the Lord of hosts. Say, I believe it, I receive it, and I call it done. In Jesus' name, amen, so be it, hallelujah. Give the Lord a shout of praise, come on.
You know, I was, um, before Robin comes this morning, I was listening to Krista, and the Lord prompted me, and I saw myself do something. And um, the Lord prompted me about this. You know, when the root becomes part of the fruit, then you're, you can really get something done. What I mean by that is this. Notice, love is defined two different ways. On the enemy's side, it's the love of money. And the love of money, money can't save anybody. Money can't save souls. It buys and sells souls. So the love of money becomes the taproot of all evil. But love himself is the one that told Adam where the gold was. So it's the displacement of love that's causing all of this. But when the root can become part of the fruit. Now let me tell you what I'm talking about that, what I mean. is I remember when Robert and I first started serving the Lord when I got saved, I got radically saved. I, I, wasn't, I wasn't just saved for Sunday and saved for when I was around people. I got radically saved. I was so grateful to be alive that I just, whatever God wanted, that's what I committed to do. It didn't make any difference. I, I remember driving a 72 Buick Skylark station wagon that leaked the back window leaked so bad it's an old brady bunch station wagon and i'd drive it all the way to uh, almost to tuscaloosa and back five nights a week to preach a revival and um that's that was the whole ministry right there and no money no food nothing you just go i remember when the lord told me one time he said i want you to go to um uh, Phoenix City, Alabama, preach at this brother's church, no offerings, nothing. Just go there every Tuesday night or whenever it was. Go there and preach and drive back. I went there and drove back every night, every single night that I went. And so love became a motivating factor in my life. I loved God. I wanted to do what he wanted me to do. I remember we were playing music and we had this, this steel guitar player that played with us and he didn't have any teeth. None of us had any money. We all got saved out of hell. So he had no teeth. Hell had rotted his teeth out. You, you can smile or stare or whatever you like to do, but I'm telling you what happened. He wanted teeth and we wanted him to have it. Because we'd be on stage and the power of God hit the stage and he'd just cry and cry and open his mouth and there'd be no teeth. And how old was he? Just a young man, just a real young guy in his 30s. And he'd, he'd wave, he'd raise his hands and try to hide his mouth, crying so hard he couldn't, he loved the Lord. So I didn't have any money to fix his teeth. If I'd have had any money at all, I'd have fed my family. That's what I thought I would do. Well, I, I, got, I took a job building some cabinet doors, some cabinets. But I didn't realize to build a double raised panel door, you needed equipment. And all I had was a jigsaw, a hammer, some nails, and a skill saw. And the Lord told me how to build those doors with that one morning, right before I woke up. So I built it. It was custom doors, and it was beautiful. So I, was, I knew how to do something. He taught me how to do something besides play. So the Lord, the young man's mother wanted a set of cabinets. And, but, her, but he needed teeth. And she said, well, I'm, I, I've got to have these and, and this and that. I'll, I'll tell you what I'll do. I will buy 
his teeth if you will build my cabinets. So that's what I did. Out of my own money, whatever I did, I just built it. Well, we sewed into his mouth because we didn't have any money. But now the root is becoming part of the fruit. And I'm using it to show the love of God. And it was, I just wanted him to have them so. And here we were eating gravy and bread. Or we called them, them old red dye weenies. Wieners. You know, you squeeze them in your hand, leaves a red mark across your palm. And so I guess we were still eating those then. Oh, yeah. And we'd buy a loaf of light bread, you know, light bread. It wasn't, it wasn't good bread. It's the bread rats don't eat. And we'd just take the weenies and put them in the bread. And I, I come up with all kinds of ways I could fix them. Do you know you can take a weenie and and cut it halfway through all the way down and boil it in water and it'll make a circle and you can make a make-believe hamburger out of it. <laughs> you can do a lot of things. But anyway, I, uh, so we did his teeth. Well, we couldn't pay a light bill, you know. We didn't have a light bill. I mean, we couldn't have the money to pay it. And so it went five months behind. Now, some of you looking at each other now said, no, they cut them off. Well, no, they had to come out back then to cut them off. They didn't just throw a switch. And so we would believe God every month our lights would stay on. Five months had passed. And I just, I told Robin, I said, let's just lay across the bed here. Go to sleep. I said, if they don't cut them off today, tomorrow's Saturday, they won't come out. So we fell asleep and woke up after 5 o'clock, and our lights were still on. Well, we're, we're there, and all of a sudden we hear this knock on that little trailer door we lived in. I opened the door, and there's my brother. Didn't he have his teeth in? Yeah. He was standing there with his teeth. And he suddenly, he had gotten a check through the mail from something. I don't know what it was. And it was substantial. And he said, Lord, praise God, I have this money. And the Lord said, go pay your brother's light bill now. So he came over there <laughs> and he paid the light bill after five months. Now, you know that's a miracle, five months, and they didn't turn them off. But he paid them. Now, what's happening is, is the root is becoming part of the fruit. I'm giving into his life. The Lord moved him to give into our life. The next thing you know, it's not the love of money. It's the love of God using money to bless everybody around and so when it's not precious to you and the love of God is precious to you, now you're going to use the root to spread the fruit. And that's the key. Why did I tell you all of that? Because I believe prophetically the church, the whole body of Christ has moved into a time that we've never seen Time was rushed forward. Things you see happening now wasn't supposed to happen for a few years. But lines have been drawn and redrawn. Time has been rearranged. And God is going to move people into their destiny to do what he promised you. And to do what you saw yourself doing for years and years. And he's going to bless you to do it. It doesn't make any difference to God when you say this looks impossible, not to him. Because you serve the God, of, if you ask him for something, if he didn't have it, he'd just make it. 
So you're going to be moved into a place of prosperity very soon, I believe. People say, well, you know, these people, these naysayers that watch me right now and criticize me, they're all going to be left behind in that anyway, unless they repent of that. But well, I don't have time to look at that. We have, we have to bring this harvest in. So I think God wants to move the body of Christ into a position to receive what's needed to complete the destiny of what he's planned. Hallelujah. And the way he's going to do that is you have to begin to make the root part of the fruit and use it to, to do. And the Lord will show you how to do that. Just be bold and do it. Even if it's put somebody's teeth in their mouth. Whatever he's going to tell you to do, he's setting you up for something now. And soon you'll be walking where your head used to be. Hallelujah. So I saw myself come out here and play an E minor. I saw myself come out here, and I'm going to sound this shofar. And when I do, it's going to create a sound, a prophetic sound. I believe that's going to, it's the frequency that dispels death. Death in not only your physical life, spiritual life, financial life, whatever it may be. It's the sound of the shofar. And the Lord, I saw myself come out here and sound that before Robin preached. And so I want you just to lift your hands and bless the Lord. Oh, you can leave that here. I, I'm not. Oh, does he? Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. Now, Lord, we thank you for your goodness, <clears throat> for your mercy and your kindness. Now, Lord, we make this sound to disrupt enemy forces in the earth. The enemy forces of the occult, the enemy forces of death that would try to keep your people from their destiny. Lord God, you says in the end, when you return in that great day, that you'll return with a shout and the sound of the shofar and the dead in Christ will rise. It will create such, such a disruption that death is dispelled. So, Lord God, today we sound this sound in order that your people, it creates a disruption in hell as to take its hands off of their finances, take its hands off of their life, take its hands off of their children and their posterity. Hallelujah. From the root to the fruit. Hallelujah. Death dispelled. Death dispelled. A shout for your victory.
check. Hallelujah. <laughs> hallelujah. <laughs> My brother Timothy, hallelujah. <laughs> All right, I'm not doing another offering, I promise. But <laughs> speaking of blessed to be a blessing and uh, something very exciting we wanted to show before mom comes and preaches uh, this morning and brings the word. Uh, she sat down with our host of The Lord Has Done Great Things, Mr. Dallas Eubanks. And uh, yes, uh, she sat down with him this week and had a very uh, just amazing sit down. And uh, I'm glad I got to be there for it. But we want to show you something that has been a dream come true of ours for a very long time. And uh, we get to present it to all of you today. So if you will draw your attention to the screen as we present something very special this holiday season. Shalom CI family, I'm Dallas Eubanks and I am joined by Pastor Robin of Church International. Pastor Robin, thank you for having us sit down with me. Oh, thank you for having me. We have something very special to tell the folks about. We do. That we have planned for this holiday season. It is a dream come true for you. Yes. Christmas on the Red Brick Street. Yes. Tell us about it. Well, we are having... Uh, an event that is so special and dear to my heart and um, we see a need in the community and of course we we want to help and be there with our hand extended so this started uh, I'm just going to rewind back. absolutely because this is an inaugural event it is, it is. and so back years 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 ago uh, Robin and I had one child at this time, Amber, and she was just a little little girl. And um, we had uh, we were in church, and so we didn't have mentors, and which I wish we had of at that time. But we were um, we were struggling very very much more than than I'd like to remember. But we Amen. we were struggling. And he was working in, in the coal mines. And they had went on strike and, and it was Christmas. And we had nothing. And my heart was just breaking because even though Amber was a only grandchild and only great grandchild on my side, and I knew that you know her Christmas was going to be bought by the grandparents and great grandparents, but I couldn't get her anything. And I was just, just in tears and somebody told me, said, why don't you go up to the Human Resource Department? They give away toys. And so I went up there and thinking I was gonna, you know, get some toys, but it was late in the season. I mean, I'm talking like a couple of days before Christmas. And they told me, they said, I'm sorry, uh, we're, we gave out, we don't have anything out left. And I guess the lady just saw me tear up. She said, well, let me go look. And she went in the back and she come out <laughs> with a little wind up Smurf doll about that tall and a pair of summer pajamas. And I am just devastated. And I said, this is all that's left? And uh, she said, I, I'm sorry, this is all. And you know, Years later, that's why the Lord spoke to me and He said, man's not big enough to be a human's resource. Mm -hmm. That's why you have to make God your source mm -hmm. and not a man. Because at any time, they can run out. Mm -hmm. And the window's closed. But with God, He never runs out. Oh, yeah. And so I'm, I am a young mother, uh, maybe 19, I don't even think Amber was two years old yet. She was just uh, about a year old. And this lady come running out. She said, I found a doll. It was a little cloth doll. And she said, you can have it. And I got the doll. And I never will forget when I looked at the tag on it, the name on the doll was Amber. Mm. And, it, and I knew that was meant for her. Mm. And I said, Lord, if I ever 
you know, I didn't know how to believe in faith that time, but I said, if I ever have the means to help somebody at Christmas time, I said, I will. So years fast forward, years later, after 1988, when we really committed to the Lord, and I got in the Word, and I saw things that I could, in the Word, that I could mix my faith with mm -hmm. and believe. I said, Lord, and I, I said, I want a warehouse one day. And I said, I'm going to fill it with toys. And when I do, I, not one mother that was in my shoes will be turned away crying. Mm -hmm. I said, we will be able to bless people. And you know, Dallas, in Isaiah 55 says, Everyone that thirsteth, come ye to the waters. And he that hath no money, come ye by, and eat ye. Come by wine and milk without money and without price. Mm -hmm. And so we are saying, come and get hot chocolate and toys and cookies without price. Amen. And we have the scripture to stand on. So this past week, I gathered uh, all the grands and my spiritual grands, and we went shopping, and we filled up 13 buggies of toys, but we're not through, we're going back. And the people at Walmart, and these are not cheap toys. I mean, we got good stuff here. We've got bicycles, tricycles, we've got uh, dolls, we've got dinosaurs, we've got uh, all kinds of stuff, and we've got the- Electronics. I mean, electronics, oh my goodness. Wow. We've got all the things, and um, we uh, are going back for more. And we have a warehouse that we are putting them in. And I, I stood there, and I watched, and we took up. Uh, they gave us our own aisle at Walmart to check out, and the lady was like, Oh, my goodness, I can't believe that, that y'all were doing this. I watch y'all all the time. And I wow. said, well, praise God. And so she was checking us out and the kids were laughing. They were having such a good time picking out. I said, now you go and pick out what you think your age group would like. And they dispersed throughout Walmart and they were um, gathering up everything. And then Amber looked at me and it was so fitting that she be with me. And she looked at me and she said, mom, she said, your dream has come true. Amen. She said, it's really, she said, this day, she said, it came true. And I stood there and as we, <laughs> as we loaded everything up, we were loading up in the pickups and, and uh, vans and SUVs and, and we got it back here and I looked and I stood in that warehouse and I looked around and I thought, I've, I've saw my promise and I've Amen. saw my vision. Well, there are multiple harvests, Pastor, uh, in your life right now that we are all uh, beneficiaries of. You began this ministry in 1988. You had that dream then, mm -hmm. back in the early 80s when Amber was born. Your harvest is here. Yes. Now, I think what is so exciting to me is that, as you mentioned, you took your grandchildren, your spiritual grandchildren, there is, a, there is a group of children here, mm -hmm. um, staff children, that every one of them who went on that trip, while you were reaping your harvest, you were sowing more seeds that all of these children, one being mine, will know yeah. where that seed came from and will harvest the same. Amen, amen. You know, another thing, when we were in the old, uh, grocery store building here in the 90s and I think Amber was uh, just uh, I don't know maybe 13 something like that Crystal was in a car seat she was just a baby and uh, we went to a, a place that was poverty was just I mean it was just so visible and we didn't have a whole lot but what we had at that time um, we took it over there and distributed toys and coats. Yes. And that's another thing we need to, uh, I want to be able to 
you know, have all sizes of coats because people need coats. And not only that, that day, Dallas, is if people say, you know, if they need help with, with groceries because we want people to have a, a wonderful Christmas meal. Yes. You know, the Bible says, uh, just don't say be warm and filled. Pr give them something, you know, to be warm and filled. Yes, yes. And so uh, we want to be able to help with that. But uh, in the 90s when we did that, Amber told me, she said, Mother, I never will forget the look in this lady's face when we showed up at their door. And their trailers had, uh, mobile homes had like uh, chains that shut the door, you know, and it was just, uh, it was just pitiful. And so we had, we, we gave out everything we had and we were just like, oh, I just wish we had more, more. to give. And somebody had gave Robin and I a box of chocolates. And there used to be a man that walked the streets in Warrior. His name, was, they called him Joby. Mm -hmm. And he would walk the streets and everybody knew him and people would give him money and he'd go to Jack's. He's in heaven now. And um, so we went by and we saw Joby and he had a coat on. He was walking the street and it was beginning to snow. Mm. And uh, so we stopped and I said, Robin, give him these, this box of chocolate somebody gave us. And it was, I mean, it was new. And so we stopped and Robin said, hey, Joby, here's you some chocolates. And for Chris, said, Merry Christmas. And we went on down and we come back and he was sitting, there was a seat down, um, the buildings are torn down now, but they were sitting, there used to be an old barber shop. Yes. And uh, he, there was a seat in front of the barber shop and he was sitting there when we come back. I never will forget it. He had chocolate all over his face. Oh, hallelujah. And he was so, and that made his Christmas. Yes. So you never know who, what little thing is going to bless him. Well, and I think that you and I know that every single person you come in contact with, we're blessed to be a blessing. Uh, yes. And so you're going a little further and we're gonna bless Oh my goodness, Dallas, we're going to bless the socks off of people that day. We're going to have such a, a time. This is, I don't think I've been this excited since the church opened. Amen. Here. And because the, this was a vision, and now this is a vision that has been in the makings for years. And everybody, I, want, I told somebody the other day, I said, tell this person it, it's really happening. It's I, happening. They knew. I would stand up and I'd say, one day, you can go back and find old uh, preaching uh, tapes mm -hmm. or, or, or services that I've been since 2007. And I'd say, you just watch. One day, I'll have that warehouse full of toys. The event is December 9th. That's a Saturday. Mm -hmm. From 2 until... Whenever. We give it all away. Yeah, till we give it all away. 2 p.m. Saturday, December 9th. Most of you know where the church is. We're located... Uh, just behind the Warrior Police Department. Well, what separates us from the police department is a beautiful red brick road. That is where we will have the event. We will line the, the red brick road with uh, bicycles and, and whatever other toys that you mm -hmm. decide to pick up. Mm -hmm. um, we do need you to be a resident of Warrior. Uh, we need you to bring your driver's license, parent or guardian, please, with your child. Of course, we have set this up to bless children. Yes. We would like for you to bring your children along with you, hot chocolate and cookies, and just a great time uh, for you to feel the goodness of Church International. What yes. else, Pastor? Santa Claus and Miss Claus will be here. Jesus, Jesus. Santa Claus, and Miss Claus will yes, be here. They will, so it's, it's going to be a great day. Absolutely. Well, we'll see you December 9th at 2 p.m., just out in front of Church International here in Warrior, Alabama. Also, uh, one thing we didn't say is if you are here at church, and this is your church, and you go here, but you don't live in Warrior, but this is your church. This is for you also. And um, 
So, but, you know, we, we don't, you don't want people abusing uh, a gift that, that God is, is given. So we got, got things that we're figuring out how, how it's going to be done, and, but it's going to, it's going to be done. Dallas, I felt like we were on, when it says, with Dallas Youth Bakes, I felt like I'm on a game show. That is so awesome. <laughs> this is, is this not great? It is so good. Well, I hope you're not in a hurry because we, um, I want to get into the word right now. And uh, this is, I got so in, in just, loving that that is just so awesome and I, I love the the um, God has done great things the Lord has done great things for us so we have got we're going back this week for another load of toys and um, this time I want to get the teens to go with us to help and uh, so we are it's just so much going on and if you want to help you say well I want to get in on this we, we're getting new toys, not used toys. These are all new toys. And um, you say, well, I, I don't want to go out and buy a toy, but if you want to pick up a, a Walmart gift card, somewhere like that, um, I just, I'm going to tell you right now, we don't, we're not doing Target. So, <laughs> so don't bring a Target gift card. Um, if you want to bring a, a grocery card, maybe from Piggly Wiggly or Publix or somewhere like that, that's your local grocery stores around here, um, you can, and uh, something like that, and you would like to see uh, Kayla or Chrissy, uh, somebody in the front, Kayla, Chrissy, raise your hand if nobody knows who you are, and so... Uh, and so we will be able to take those and, and bless people. We'll take the gift cards, send out, and go buy, buy toys. And so make sure no child will get turned away that day. And, and our Santa and Miss Santa are spirit-filled. We have known them for years and years, and so they are precious people. And they are uh, spirit-filled Santa Claus and Miss Santa Claus. So. So they are being a blessing around this time everywhere they go. Amen. Pointing people to Jesus. Amen. Amen. Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your word. Give us eyes to see and ears to hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying to the church at this hour. Amen. Amen. Well, uh, the Lord's been speaking to me uh, about... Something out of Joel, uh, Joel chapter 3. And uh, I was reading the whole chapter, and it's so fitting for, for this time and what's going on. But an excerpt out of, uh, out of Joel, I kept hearing about the valley of decision. Yeah. The valley of decision. And in uh, Joel chapter 3, uh, we're going to go up to verse 13 says put in the sickle for the harvest is ripe come get your uh come get you down for the press is full the fats overflow for their wickedness is great multitudes multitudes in the valley of decision for the day of the lord is near in the valley of decision keeps talking about the valley of decision multitudes multitudes and one translation the amplified says for the day of the of the lord is near in the valley of decision uproars uproars in the valley of decision multitudes uh one translation says thousands upon thousands in the valley of decision in this time the Lord spoke to me in the time of the remnant. You say, where's the rest of them at? They're in the valley of decision. They're in the valley of decision. But the thing about a decision is, is just a plain old definition out of Webster's is a conclusion or a resolution reached after consideration. 
the action or process of deciding something quickly and decisively. Being decisive. I've never seen so many indecisions or people who's undecided about something. They can't make up a, a they can't make a decision. They they flip flop back and forth. Fence setters are in the valley of decisions on their property lines. The valley of decision has become a subdivision of its own. And it's housing families in this valley because they get down there and they get among people that can't make quality decisions and they just stay put there when the decision is to make this to be quickly and decisively but they camp out there and they get to talking about everything and they get to to hearing their own counsel and in this valley of decision there is no counsel sound counsel because everybody is undecided of what they're going to do, so they're bouncing off their own indecisiveness, and there's no sound counsel to be had. I've never met people that they're, this is, you know, and I'm just going to, and I don't mean to be funny. People say, you missed your calling. You should have been a comedian. I didn't know I was funny. But I'm just going to tell you what I see. This is now. They drive to the valley of decision <laughs> in their little smart cars. And they get there. And this is it. They're at a drive through Can I help you? Yes, I need a prophetic word. It's a drive-through prophet. Have you got a word for me? I've come 5,000 miles. I, I'm just going to tell you something. I ain't driving 5,000 miles for nobody when I can get in this word right here and get a word for myself. Now, Yes, I may drop 5,000 miles to a meeting that I want to, to go to or, or the Lord has me at. And I'm not making fun of anybody, but I'm going to tell you something right now. We're going to have to get beyond the stage of feelings. We're going to have to get beyond the stage. Everybody goes, well, you know, you got the pamper stage. Yes, but at being saved 20 years, isn't it time that you're potty trained? I mean, come on for the love of the Lord. Get out of pampers and sure enough, get out of pull-ups. Go to the store and get you adequate underwear for your age. Sherry, this is one of those messages. Sherry goes, every time Sherry says something about me, is I thank, the, I thank uh, Pastor that her correction. <laughs> I'm like, God, do I correct every time I get up? <laughs> She's with me. Hallelujah. But I kept hearing the valley of decision, the valley of decision. But this is, this is so important. The valley of decision is, is just that. It's Walking through, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow. And in Psalms 23, and we're still in 23 and me, yea, though I walk through the valley of decision, I put myself in this valley of decision. It's time you walk on through the valley of decision. It says a quick, decisive, Something you put action to means you're walking on through this valley. You're not building a subdivision there and getting to know your neighbors in the valley of decision. Everybody having a cookout in the valley of decision. Everybody getting, and you know what happens in the valley of decision? They form a church in the valley of decision.
Hallelujah. Let's lift our hands and bless the Lord. All over the house, let's bless the Lord. There was another message someone had to give that one. Yes. Yes. For out of the mouth of two or three, let every word be established. For this is two witnesses in the spirit, and now the word is being told of what is said and done. For I am going to give you clarity in the future, but you have to have the courage to act upon it. You must have the courage to do what I tell you to do and say what I tell you to say. For I have not forgotten you, says the Lord. I have not forgotten you in these times. I never said that I would leave you alone. I said I would constantly be with you and stick closer than a brother. So go ahead and make your decision in faith. And make one and start moving forward. For I have set before you the sunrise. I have set before you the sunrise to prophesy into the sunrise. Prophesy into the sunrise that wherever where the light touches, you'll be delivered. Prophesy, says the Lord, and speak my word into the coming day. For my mercy is renewed every day. It's renewed on your behalf. So get ready to take advantage of the new. Take advantage of the renew. Take advantage of the sunrise. Take advantage of the new day. For this is the day the Lord has made. And you just rejoice and be glad in it. And I'll see to the enemies that's trying to camp out round about you and trying to sneak up on you from behind. For I will be your rear guard, and I'm a good rear guard for you, says the Lord. And I can take care of you, and I will feed you, and I will see to you, and I will clothe you. I will do what's necessary for you. You just do what I say and rejoice and be glad. So go ahead and do it now, says the Lord. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Bless Good the Lord. is the word of the Lord. Good is the word of the Lord. We esteem the, we word, esteem of the, Lord. the word of the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 And in this valley, houses are going up. Houses are going up. Real estate is pricey there in that valley. And they're going up so fast. You ever seen a subdivision go up so fast and you're thinking, how, how is that? How, how can that house be structurally sound? Because they're going up so fast and the material is cheap. And it absolutely is going up until the people can't, they can't see their way out of the valley of decision. And, and so all of a sudden they're their own community and they have their own which this decision has to be made quick. And they find themselves into, into a place. And I'm not, I'm not criticizing because people are, but I've never seen, the word says forsake not the assembly of yourself you know Jesus they said he went to the temple which was his custom so Jesus had a custom to go to church we have to have but we've got to have a church that is preaching the word the word the 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 word of the living God not somebody's ideas not somebody that, that, um, that's just flotty and, and just the, the pop-up prophet thing that everybody thinks that all oh, you're going to, you know, oh, I'm going to go there because a prophet is at that church and I'm going to go there and he'll have a word for me every day or she'll have a word for me every Sunday or I'm going to dial a prophet. Listen, prophets are not for hire. 
1-800-PROPHET don't exist. And I may be stepping on somebody's prophetic toes, but I'm going to tell you something. This is in my spirit. And if, it ha if it's not in my spirit to teach, it, there, there has to come some sound teaching in the body. If not, these subdivisions in the valley of decision, there is our multitudes. There is our armies. And it says there is an uproar. There is an uproar in the valley of decision. And there is people, and the Lord's been dealing with me for months about this. He said there's people that has left this ministry that is in the valley of decision on whether, whether to come back. And I, you know, I had to have a come to Jesus party with my wife. I thought, well, if they're gone, just let them, let them stay gone. You know what I mean? <laughs> Go on, little sheep. <laughs> you think I'm kidding you, but um, John Osteen did that. Listen, you know what? You want everybody to love the Lord, and you want everybody to get along, but then there's some people who just are troublemakers. And they're troublemakers in the body. And there's backbiting. And that's one thing the Lord, he don't like, and I don't either. Is backbiting causing discord among the brethren? That ain't, that ain't cool. And that's not God. No, it's not God. And he won't put up with it, neither will I. And there'll come a point in time that... You know, I'll, I'll deal with it as long as the Lord lets me deal with it. But then there comes a time I'm going to, ta I'm going to deal with it. He'll deal with it with you through your spirit, but he'll deal with me if I don't deal with you. And I'm not going to have an infection get in the church or something malignant such as somebody's tongue that they can't control. And there comes a time, you know, that's not my favorite part of the job to do, but it is my job description because I have to protect the rest of the sheep from being infected. And so, you know, I've never exactly looked at anybody like John Osteen did and call them into their office and tell them, go on, little sheep. Go on, little sheep. This is not for you here. You can't, you can't stop yourself. You can't quit gossiping. You can't quit backbiting. You can't quit sowing discord among the brother. And they walked on down the sidewalk and would turn around and look back at him and he'd say, now go on, go on. But you know what? There was so much love in his heart that they just, they went on. There was no fussing. There was no fighting or nothing like that. But the Lord told me, he said, there's people that's left this ministry that's in the valley of decision. And that's when I thought, well, if they're in the valley of decision, though, it means that the Lord is working in their, with their heart, with their working on things in, with them. We all got to be worked on. The day you become unteachable is the day that you stop growing. <laughs> me also. You know, dear Lord, we have to learn, and we have to still get in the Word. You can read the, the same chapter and verse every day of your entire life and get something different out of it every time you read it. And so as, um, as I was thinking about, I kept hearing about the valley of decision, the valley of decision, and the Lord spoke to me and he said, but they're down there and they won't make a decision. They won't make a quality decision. They, they camp out. They listen to somebody else's indecisiveness. They listen to somebody else's why I'm in the valley of decision. They listen to somebody else's I'm hurt. They hurt me. I'm down here. I don't know what to do. Well, have you been to church? Well, no, but I've watched this one, this one, this one, this one. Yeah, but have you watched the word? No, I've listened to this prophetic message and this prophetic message, but have you listened to the word or listened to the word? You see, because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the preach 
word of God. The preach word of God. I may not be your cup of tea. I may not be the pastor that you need for you. But there is other pastors out there that you could listen to. And, you know, I have my favorites that I like to listen to. But I make sure the ones that I do listen to is preaching from the word of God of God and that they are not straying from it it's not their idea of something and because with for every we've said this and said this Robin has said this over and over for every prophetic message that you hear you need to hear two word of faith to balance yourself to have that foundation up under you because the prophetic is very heavy and it's very weighty and you've got to have a foundation. If not, you become uh, uh, somebody who's on a sand. You're on a sand foundation and that's not going to hold you at all. And so in this place of indecision, You've got to become, this was told to me uh, about our new speaker of the house and how many are so thankful for, that we have such a man of God in office like that. And, and somebody interrupted him and he said, I, he said, I'm the new speaker of the house. He said, that's my, I, I'm him. I'm the new, I'm the, the the speaker new speaker of the house. And in, in, in other words, you be quiet. I'm the one in authority here speaking. And the Lord spoke to me. I heard him speak to me and he said, Yes, and are you the speaker of your house? He said, Are you the speaker of your house? What are you speaking out of your house? If you are speaking the word out of your house, then you're not going to end up in a new subdivision that is put up that looks like everybody else's house and you're not going to, to wind up in the valley of decision, but you're going to be speaking out of your house, which is the temple of the Holy Ghost, and you're going to be speaking the word out of your house and you're going to have a firm foundation. You're going to be, it's going to be built on the rock of Jesus Christ and you're going to make sound decisions and you're going to hear clear when you start um, getting in the valley of decision so to speak and we're saying we know that it's talking here about Israel but people are in a valley of decision in their lives where to go? Should I go here? Should I not go here? Should I go? Should we do this? Should we not go this? What are we It comes down simple. What are we going to eat today? I don't know. Where would you like to eat? I don't know. (laughs) It don't matter to me. Well, sure it matters. I've got where I speak up. We we do the, where you want to eat today? I don't know. Well, let's go here. And I went and I did it. And I want to go. And I sat there miserable eating because I didn't want that food. But I didn't want to say anything. Because I'm thinking, listen, a pastor and a prophet are two different offices. So if he says, let's go here, I'm thinking, oh, is the Lord leading us? Are we going, is this, is this a word from the Lord? I've got where I ask. Is is the could save your life? I said, is the is the Lord leading you? And if He says yes, then by all means we're going. I'm going to like this food because this is manna today. But if He says no, not really. I'm like, uh, uh-uh, I don't want that. Don't even want that. Don't want that today. So you're going to you're going to hear. You just make a decision. What are we gonna what are you gonna wear today? I don't know. Pick something. Just pick something and wear it. Because if you don't, well you don't have that problem. But 
He said, I will pick something. But do what? No, I thought you said, I, never mind. We're back and forth out right here. But you, you just, you have to be decided about something. Whether it be whatever it is, make the decision. Because if you linger too long, the enemy gets in. And when he gets in, then you're headed down the path to the valley of decision. Listen, I respect my husband's office. I, I am very respectful of his office. And he can, he'll be the first to tell you, I am, I will, when he says, the Lord told me this, well, that's, that's all it ne I need because I believe the prophets. And so I prosper. I'm very respectful, and I do not make light of his office whatsoever. And I won't put up with anybody else doing it either. I was called alongside to help him. And if it means hurting somebody else for it, I'll do it. I know, I'm, i got to get over that. I, I really appreciate the, the height y'all they gave me the other day, I mean, which I'm wearing heels right now, and they said I was 5'3". I, I looked at Robin, I said, I'm not 5'3". I, I guess they needed something to rhyme with or something. I said, I'm barely 5'2", but I, I, I appreciate that. <laughs> Where was I? I've got to go. Anyway, there's people in the, in the Valley of Decision. When that subdivision gets so big and the walls get so high, there's always somebody going to put a fence around it. And then it'll turn into a gated community. And when it is, it's going to be hard to get out of it. But the thing about it is, is there's always people in there that they wake up and they say, you know what? I've been in this valley of decision way too long. And so I've got to come out of it. But the Lord showed me the other day, there is a window of time. And it's like the ark. There was a window of time when the Lord told Noah, build the ark. And then he started getting the animals in. But Noah knew seven days before it was time to shut the door. And I believe the Lord comes to people seven days, which is a completion. Seven days before the door or the gate to the land of decision is shut. And they're there. And they're there with their, their counsel. They're there with their church that they've built they're there with people that they put in place and all the little things that they have done that they used to think was so bad but yet it got easier because you see in the valley of decision there comes this thing called a compromise and a compromise is better in the valley of decision than a firm foundation somewhere else. But what they don't know is what you compromise to keep, you will lose. So... There's people that are making these decisions. Should I go? Should I stay? There's people in this room right now. Should I go? Or should I, should I stay? Should I, I, I keep coming? There's people watching online saying, you know, 
should I, sh- should I come or should I, I not? I not come. <laughs> should I not come? You know, I'm not anybody's Holy Spirit. You have to listen to the Lord for you. But there is something that I know that if the Lord brings you here where he calls you to abide, he will provide. And he will make sure things are set for you. You know, we've had people come. We've had people come that was a plant. We've had people come that that said that the Lord called them here and that they uh, just wanted to come and give all their money to the church, that they were well off. And they were a plant. And we watched on camera, got it on camera, when they pulled them into the parking lot when they fixed them up under the sign that says God is absolutely good and did a photo op of them with brand new luggage. But then we've had people that said, I know without a doubt God called me here. What was that, what was that for? That was to discourage other people from hearing the Lord and to try to make something out of, uh, uh, just just make up a lie. Just make a lie up. And it was a lie straight out of hell. And then they just disappear after they've got their, their story that they think that they've got and all their, their um, publicity that they think they've got their 15 minutes of fame. And then they leave. But then... You know, I heard the word charade. This is not a charade, but this is truth. This is truth. And so have your feet planted on solid ground, and you won't be playing charades. You'll be listening to the word, and you'll grow, and you will grow. And you will grow more. And you will prosper. It's no game, says the Lord. We esteem the word of the Lord. And so, then you have people that they know, they know that they know they've heard to come. And the Lord provides and and, and they're... Things, uh, homes are, you know, um, they're home, not that we have bought you a home. We have not bought people homes. And <laughs> that they, they have everything secure. You know, Robin and I have been accused of buying people houses and, and saying, you've got to move here and, and this and that. And, and it, it's just so crazy what people will, will accuse you of. But to me, those are people who's been in the valley of decision. They've lived in that subdivision a lot. But getting back to what the Lord showed me about about the ark. And the Lord told me, he said, the thing about a valley is, is it floods. And there's a flood about to come in that valley. And he said, the reason you're preaching this now is because it's seven days. It's yet seven days. Now, you'll say, okay, seven days from today. I remember preaching uh, about this time tomorrow. And it was so big in me. I'm telling you what, I jumped up the next day and I didn't have online banking or anything else. It didn't matter if I had online banking, didn't have much to bank. And, and I just waited for that statement to come through the, to, through the mail and prayed I didn't get that other overdrawn letter that come through it, you know, daily. Some of you probably don't even know what I'm talking about. Bless your heart. I'm so glad you don't. But 
We, uh, those of you who do, just don't raise your hand. I love you. You're my people. I know. <laughs> we know. We know. And it was so in me that I thought, oh, my goodness, about this time tomorrow, and then suddenly it's going to happen. It's all going to change about this time tomorrow. I think it was might have been 2016 or 17 when I preached this. I had people call me. It was when? 2017, did you say? Okay. Okay, you remember it. And I, it was so in me. Everybody got just... I had somebody call me and said, well, it's a, you preached it at this time, and it's about that time tomorrow, and nothing has happened for me. And I thought, and I said, well, it's about that time tomorrow. About that time tomorrow. There's still a tomorrow about that time. And then they got mad at me. Call me again. Well, it's about, it's about this time tomorrow, and that hadn't happened. I said, well, about this time tomorrow. <laughs> I know they thought I was just putting them off. It wasn't my word. It was the word of the Lord. So the Lord told me, he said, there's a flood coming in that valley. And if people don't make a quick, A resolution, an, an action, the action or process of deciding something quickly, decisiveness. If they do not do that, the flood is going to come. That door to that subdivision is going to shut. And they're going to be stuck there. And they're not going to ever get out. Because when the door shut, the rain came. The rain started. And when it did, it become a flood. Now there is a flood that is coming of people that are coming into the body. And they're coming into this. You're seeing it happen now. You see, things are... Things have changed. And I just don't mean to put that out as a, you know, blanket. You've heard people give words of knowledge and say there's somebody being healed in this general area right here. <laughs> you know, I mean, <laughs> I'm not trying to do that. And I, I'm sure not a date setter unless the Lord gave me a date to set. And then I would. I would. But you're seeing revivals and you're seeing showers of different revivals that are happening right now what's about to happen there's going to be a flood and you look around and you see people they're doing four or five different they're wearing four or five different hats and you're thinking because it's a remnant. And you're thinking, where when all these people come, you you need you need people, you need ministries of help. You need more volunteers. You need more people, altar workers, prayer ministers. We we gotta have more people helping, more people working. Where are they all at? They've all built houses down or bought property in the valley of decision. It says there's an uproar. One translation said there's an uproar because there are thousands and thousands in the valley of decision. So there's intercession session going forth and going out into the spirit world. And there's intercession for these people 
My people, says the Lord, my people, for the valley of decision leads to the valley of dry bones because the moistness has gone. The anointing is is flowing in a way that it is not lubricating their bones any longer and they can't stand good. They can't they can't praise good without a hurt or, or something flowing in their body that is malfunctioning. But I say intercessors, intercessors are being raised up to call out that the anointing flow into this valley, into the believers, so that they will make a decision and it be quick. We esteem the word of the Lord. So it gets to a, a real awakening time, a real sobering time. Uh, and being a pastor, you bring a, a sobering word, a, you know, this this is the spinach meal. Now, some of you like spinach. I don't know. I like it sautéed as long as I don't taste spinach. This is your iron, your greens. Now, I like turnip greens. My mama can make a pot of turnip greens. Oh, my goodness. She can. This is that pot of greens for your iron. You know, like Papa. Do you remember Papa? When the, the spinach, when he would get all strong. You may, this may not taste good, but it's good for you. And so, in the valley of decision. You're not supposed to stay there. You know, it's just like, I've heard this. I've said it until I knew better not to say it. And then I quickly dismissed it. That's one thing, guys. You know, when we start, when we learn what not to say, that's when our mouth is causing us problems, ditch it and don't say it again. You know, we used to say all the time, and growing up we heard this all the time. You heard, that tickles me to death. We always sided with death. Words were like this. This was said. I'm not saying my feet, but with, people would say, my feet are killing me. They would say, my head is busting open. My back is breaking. On and on and on and on it went until it was buddying up with sickness and death. And why couldn't we say, that tickles me to life? Oh, well, that don't sound good. Okay. <laughs> or... My head is healed. We started saying something when somebody would sneeze in the house. I'm taking healing in Jesus' name. Or you're taking healing in Jesus' name. People will look at you like you got two heads when you start saying that. But why can't you put your words out for life instead of buddying up? See, putting your words with death lead you into the valley of decision. You say, I don't believe that. Well, the word says that a house, Jesus said this, and he is the word. A house divided against itself will fall. People divide their self against their own house all the time. And being the speaker of your house, you need to, to get an agreement with your spirit. Because your tongue will deceive your own body. You will say so much, so much, so much, and they'll, they'll come that jar 
I'm just using a jar. There'll come that day that this jar will be full of your words. And it will be either words of life or words of death. And people claim sickness all the time. My this, my that, my anxiety. Well, when did you own it? When did it become yours? Do you have a patent on anxiety? My OCD. I started to say CEO, but that's a company. <laughs> My OCD. Okay, well, why don't you just say I like things in order and I like to, to, to do this. Not my this or my that. And, okay, this is another. <laughs> While I'm at, I'm just going to shoot from there. There was the saying, my bad. My bad. Well, when did you become bad? Are you the poster child for bad? My bad. Oh, my bad. I'll say, don't say that. I, t I create my own kids, grandkids. My bad. I say, no, you're not bad. Don't say that. Now, all y'all that say that, y'all going to say, oh, God, help me. Don't say that around pastor. She'll correct me. <laughs> it's for your own good. Amen. Friends, don't let friends say bad stuff. Friends don't let friends say things that's not in the word. That won't help them. And so it will lead you into this place. You say, all you know, there's a this is a huge valley. This valley of decision. There's a lot of people that are there that has a, a warped concept of, of things, of the word, and so they go there hoping somebody else will help them and somebody else will give them. Everybody's got an opinion, and everybody that you go to will give you their version of your dream or your word. I had a dream. Okay. But I don't know. I think it's from God, but I'm not really sure. There's two turtles eating pizza, and I just don't know what that means. Is it? Well, if it doesn't strike you as, I mean, it's not the same as a person that comes and says, I had this dream, and I and there was these, these snakes and this and this and this, and you're thinking, oh, yeah, yeah, that, that's, from, that's from the Lord. And then they just they go off somewhere with the turtle prophecy. <laughs> now, tomorrow, if a turtle shows up in the news and I start getting all, all these... All these messages, I'm going to send them to Kayla. <laughs> so they get down there and they start talking with their, their counsel when they should have just made a quick decision and said, Lord, oh, I know what I was going to do before I got off on the my bad and all that stuff. I've had people come and say, I, I've been in a dry place. I'm in a dry place. Well, get out because that's where demons tried. That is not a place for you to even be. Where the word is, there's water. There is no dry places in the word. The enemy walks the dry place after he's been cast out. The demonic spirits do. And what are they doing? They're searching for a way to get back in. So they're going to the dry places. So a Christian has no business being in a dry place. You know, you can be out of the word and feeling like, okay, there's something wrong. But get back in the word and fill up. 
Even your body starts dehydrating. Your physical body starts dehydrating when you haven't put enough water in it. And so when if that happens to your physical body, how much more is your spirit man needing the water of the word? Hallelujah. Amen. I'm not going to keep you here all day. I'm just telling you, if you've got property in, in the Valley of Decision, sell it. Put it up for sale. I'm pretty sure it'll go for a good price because there's a lot of people down there. Better yet, just move out. <laughs> just leave it. Just leave it. And begin in your, in your time of you intercessors. Begin praying for those people to make sound decisions because I'm going to tell you something else that I have saw and um, I wouldn't have saw it unless the Lord lit it up to me. But insanity, a spirit of insanity drives around that subdivision. It drives around that subdivision waiting for somebody to let it in. And the way they do is, I, heard, I, I think I hear voices. I don't know if it's the Lord speaking to me or I'm hearing multiple voices. And then they, they start following these voices. That's not of the Lord. The Holy Spirit is one precious, sweet voice. He won't drive you insane. He won't keep on and keep on and keep on hammering at you day and night about something on and on. He will gently come to you, talk to you about something. And that spirit, it drives around that place, that valley, looking for an entrance in. And it's never been... I know you've heard me say this. You've heard Robin say this. You've heard others say this. But please, please, for your growth and your soundness of mind and your family's safety, get in the Word. Get in the Word and stop seeking so many words. From different people. Because everybody has words. And not saying that they're wrong words. They're not. Oh my goodness. The word says believe the prophets and you prosper. But I have those that I know who is in this word right here. That I listen to. And I take that as from the Lord. And Hallelujah. This is from the Word. And Joel 3 says, verse 15, The sun and the moon shall be darkened, and the stars shall withdraw their shining. The Lord also shall roar out of Zion and utter his voice from Jerusalem, and the heavens and the earth shall shake. But the Lord will be the hope of his people and the strength of the children of Israel. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Bless the Lord. So shall you know that I am the Lord your God dwelling in Zion, my holy mountain. Then shall Jerusalem be holy, and there shall no strangers pass through her any more. Hallelujah. We call on that. We call on that for Israel. Hallelujah. We call on that for the church that there be no more strangers. There will be no more people coming in that is trying to divide the body, that is trying to deceive the body. In Jesus' name. 
in Jesus' name. So if that's you today, on the other side of the camera or on this side of the camera, wherever you may be listening today, if that's you and you say, you know what, I feel like I have been in this valley for so long. It is time that I, I am up, I get up on the mountaintop, but I feel like I slide back off into the valley. You know, you need to, first of all, get out of the valley of decision, make the decision, make you a quality decision. One, and a quality decision is one which there is no turning back. That you're, that, you know, quitting's not an option. Even though you may wake up and one every day and say, you know what, I just feel like quitting. Well, who don't? But you know what? We can't do that. They're, our brothers and sisters depend on us. They depend on us. They depend on us to, to, to stay strong. Even if, you know, even if we got to go down there in that valley and drag them out. They may be kicking and screaming, but we're telling them, it's for your own good. You're going to have to leave this place. <laughs> No, you can't. That you have to let everybody make their own decision, and because everybody's a free moral agent, and you can't you can't make somebody serve God. They have to want that for themselves. Nobody can make you serve the Lord. But we pray for them. That was just a joke. I'm not going to nobody's house and drag them out. Please don't. I don't even want to do that. You don't fill a church up that way. <laughs> but you do pray for them to make the right decision, to make a fast decision, because it must be a time that it's a, uh, that's approaching, or the Lord wouldn't have even brought this up to me. And, I, and those of you that, uh, you know, who, who've been with me ministering out, I've been talking about this for a little while. And I, I just, there was something... It was growing in me, and it just kept coming about the valley of decision, the valley of decision. So I just got away yes, uh, last night, yesterday evening, because, what, today's been already 24 hours long? I mean, <laughs> we've been up, it seems like, forever. The time changed. It was a joke. <laughs> All of you were on time today. Everybody, they got here before I did. I was like, oh, my goodness, y'all are on time today. I knew they would be. They're creatures of habit. <laughs> and so I text Kayla at 6 o'clock this morning. She texted me. She was right on it. But we do pray for them, and we do intercede for them that, that they come to themselves. They make the right decision before the flood comes because I heard the Lord say yet but seven days prior to this and we were in Texas Tomball Texas that first Thursday night I had a prophetic dream and I don't have it before me I don't have it written down but I saw two people in heaven uh, one being my dad uh, he didn't say anything but he was there over to the side another being uh, one of our friends that have went on to be with the Lord in 2011 and a uh, very, very trusted man of God. And I saw him. It was so plain and so loud. There was a, looked like a cloud blanket is all I can, I can describe it as, but it was a wall. And his voice would go here to that wall, that cloud, and then it would go straight down the side of it and go around, which was coming into the earth. And he was saying, I've got to get a message to Robin. I've got to get a message to Robin. And he said, times have changed and plans are rearranged. And the Lord is coming soon. And it woke me straight up. And I knew Frank was, a, was among those cloud of witnesses. And he was trying. He was letting us know 
the Lord was. Because Frank still has seed in the earth here. He still has a family here. And he said, I'm trying to get a message to Robin. Times have changed. Plans are rearranged. And the Lord is coming soon. And so, it doesn't matter if somebody that's living in that valley of decision hurt your feelings, hurt my feelings, popped our balloons, we forgive because you don't want anybody to go through any kind of devastation or destruction in their lives of any kind that could have been helped. But there again, everybody is there, is the priest and prophet of their own life. And so we just pray. But I'm telling you right now, plans have changed. Times have changed. Plans have been rearranged. And the Lord is coming soon. Amen. So with that in our hearts, and spoken, I know, from the Lord, if you don't know Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior, I want to invite you today because there's no more in and out. There's no more playing. There's no more, um, you know, chance in it that, you know, I've got this much time. We've got this much time. No, it's changed. You know, the enemy says he takes people at will. And those who don't know Jesus, they're just walking around on borrowed time. And without the prayers and the mercy and the grace of the saints praying for you, you know, what is that old saying? You got one foot on a banana peel? But that could all change right now. That could change within the next few seconds. And all you'd have to do. Now I can't convict you. If you're not convicted, you're not convicted. But if you say, you know what? I've been thinking about that. That's the Holy Spirit tugging at you. Tugging at your heart. You may be here or online and you may say, you know what? I... I just run my mouth too much. I talk about people, I backbite, I do this, I do that. You may be the one in the valley of decision and say, you know what, I kind of just need to, to stop and just get myself right with the Lord. Just get myself right with Jesus. Just spend some time with Him and let all this other go. Cut all this other off. Cut the news off. Cut, cut social media off. And begin to just seek him and seek his face. You know, there, there used to be a, a song that we would sing. And Roxanne, I know you know it. Um, and Krista, I know you know it. I don't know. The rest of the guys, y'all know it. But when we sing this song, and that's you, and you need to come to the altar today, or you need to make, you say, well, what I say, well, y'all can come make your way on up here. <laughs> but you need to make your way to the altar, or you, you're online, and you say, I, I don't know but I'm feeling something. All you say is, Jesus, come into my heart. Be my Lord, my personal Savior. Forgive me of my sins. Wash me in your blood. The blood of the Lamb that was slain from the foundation of the earth. And if that gets us kicked off, it just gets us kicked off. 
the precious blood. Let me tell you something. The blood is your protection. The blood is your protection. And if you said that, you just made Jesus the Lord of your life. And so welcome to the family. But if you're here today and you need to come down. And I'm, I'm going over there so I can. I know what key. A song we used to do. It went, Let the worshipers arise. And let the sons and the daughters sing. I surrender all my heart. I surrender everything. Let the worshipers arise. Let the sons and the daughters sing. I surrender all. Be your defense. Let your worship go before the throne today. So let the worshipers arise. Let the worshipers arise. Everybody's good. Nobody needed to come. Nobody needed prayer. There it is. Well, praise God. You know what? So this is something today that is an individual and with God. 
because you're making a decision based on your relationship with him, your commitment with him, your renewal with him. But if you're up here and you, you need someone to pray with you, Chrissy, Tina's there. You can go. Please come and y'all can stand up there. And they will meet you there to pray with you. You know, we're going to sing this again.
that's prayed with you. You know, go to a quiet place and get in the Word. Look up scriptures that pertain to what you were delivered from today, what you've been struggling with, and begin to go through those scriptures. Not just one time, but multiple times until it gets in you until just like that, about this time tomorrow, you just knew 
that about this time tomorrow, all of that's going to be gone out of your life. You know, if it's healing, get you the Charles Capps book. I'm sure we've got plenty of those here. Well, we'll, we'll check on that with Chrissy or somebody. <laughs> I know. If not, we're going to get plenty. The, um, for healing. And go through those, like it says, three times a day. Yeah, until faith comes. Until faith comes. Until faith comes. And then once a day to maintain faith. Yes. So faith has to be maintained. And that's what the prescription is in that book. Three times a day until faith comes, and then once a day to maintain it. You know, people say, well, I know the word. I, I've read that scripture. We well, you know I've ate a potato too, but that don't mean that that's going to keep on nourishing me for six months. What is it? The memory of a potato never nourished nobody? <laughs> so... Hearing comes by the Word of God, the preached Word of God. Don't just read it in silence. You, you know, you'll believe your own voice. You've got to read it out so your ears can hear. Speak it out of your mouth. Get it in your heart. Speak it out of your mouth. And absolutely, you will see a change, a turnaround in your life. Within six months, you won't even recognize your own self. Amen. But the word is your answer. It's always your answer. But why is it the hardest thing to go to? You know why? Because the word, when you open it up, Cynthia, it won't sit and cry with you. It'll tell you the truth. It won't sit there and let you talk and tell it. Everything that Uncle so and so and Aunt so and so did to you. So, the word, although it will tell you ways to love, ways to forgive. Now, Jesus will listen to you all day long. He's easily touched with the feelings of our infirmities. But his word is solid. And his word will work and get you through any situation. Now listen, you can't manipulate. That's a form of witchcraft. So you ain't going to get the devil involved in thinking and, and that him and God's going to tag team and, and, and agree and help you. They're never going to agree on nothing. The word is solid. And the word will work if you will work the word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. They're still ministering in the altars. But we, we want you to know how much that you are loved and how much God loves you. You're absolutely the apple of his eye. You are his favorite. You need to just look up to him. Tell him how much you love him. Because he loves you more than you could ever fathom. Amen. As you were preaching on decision, there's a, a massive word in this generation called influence. There are actually people that get paid to influence other people. And they're called influencers, and that is their job. And I heard today, and see, people can influence you to make a decision. And nine times out of ten, you make the decision because somebody influenced you to make that decision. 
a lot of you came to church for the very first time because somebody influenced you to come to church. You can influence people in the right way and you can influence people in the wrong way. And there are people out there who will influence you in the right way and there are people who will influence you in the wrong way. And as she was talking, what a message on the Valley of Decision. I don't want a house there. That's some place I don't dream to live. It's frustrating not being able to make a decision. And it causes a lot of strife in your home when you're not able to make a decision. And not just in your home, but in your life, in your head. It sounds like static in your head when you can't make a decision. But I heard, as you go this week, influence somebody in the right direction. How do you know that you're influencing that you're influencing them correctly when your influence is based out of this? When you go to them and you you show them in the word, you speak the word over somebody's life. Not only will it influence them to make the right decision, but it influences them to make a sound decision. The scripture says that we have not been given the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. The scripture also says, let this mind be in you that's in Christ Jesus. So you have to let it be in you. It ain't just something that's coming. You have to let it. And imagine that. God just don't throw his words around. If he says, let this mind be in you, there are actually people that don't want to let the mind of Christ be on the inside of them. You and I would look at them like they're crazy. You mean to tell me you won't let the mind of Christ be? Some people sleep better when white noise is in their head. And that's where the enemy comes in. So you and I, after hearing this message today, we are now responsible for influencing people in the right direction to make a decision. Because now we, are, we know it now, which makes us responsible. So don't let somebody in your life. Now people are going to make their own decision regardless whether you have influenced them or whether you have not. But don't let them make a decision knowing that you never even tried to influence them in the right direction. That's something that you don't need to go to bed with on your mind. So this week, let's be influencers, but influencers of the word. Jesus was the ultimate influencer and we're still influenced by him today. So as we close today's service, I wanted to let you all know, no matter where you're at in the world, I wanna, if I can influence you with anything, it is number one to make Jesus the Lord of your life. That's the best decision you could ever make. And it's just simply by saying, Jesus, I believe in my heart that God raised you from the dead and I confess with my mouth that you are my Lord. And just to add something with it, say, take my life and do something with it. My next influence to you is get in the Word. Get in a good Bible-based church like Pastor was speaking today, a church that preaches the Word. And I promise you, you will not regret those decisions. Amen. So until next time, we gather together right here around God's word. We want you to remember that we love you. Jesus loves you. And God is absolutely good. Shalom, shalom.